Welcome to the ADHX Writer's Room. I'm Liz Booker. In this conversation with Erin Murphy, author of a picture book, Halfway Home, about aviation animal rescue, she talks about the factors that weighed into her decision to publish through a hybrid publisher and promoting and distributing the book as an independent author. So continuing my conversation with Erin Murphy, the author of Halfway Home, which is a picture book that features a dog who finds a happy home through uh, aviation rescue services. So in the earliest, earlier portion of our conversation, you talked in depth about your writing background and kind of how you prepared and honed your craft to write a picture book. Um, my question for you is starting out, uh, did you consider traditional publishing at all? So I consider traditionally traditional publishing um, immediately. I just thought that seemed to um, be the way to go. Uh, so I did go on submissions for it, um, which was an extreme amount of legwork for someone who had absolutely zero point of reference to the writing world. So, you know, I was on um, manuscript um, wish list and looking up different agents to see what they were looking for and following their submission guidelines and then just looking up my comp books, flipping them over, who are their publishing houses, who are their agents, you know, and then submitting from there. And then, you know, I was tracking them and I, I was very much prepared for, um, for, re for rejections or people passing it over. So in that process, I initially started out very casual and thought, whatever, if this thing gets picked up in five years from now, it's not like I'm, you know, shifting careers to a writer. If it happens, it happens kind of thing. And like I said, in the previous, my previous statement, I just start to get itchy. I just, I don't know. I start to lose patience with the timeline and I started to get, um, have that feeling coupled with my enthusiasm for the air rescue. I was volunteering so much now. And then my husband and I started fostering. Um, so the ideas and the stories and the manuscripts were just pouring out of me. So I just thought, okay, this might not be a one and done. Um, and so if that's the case, um, I would like to get the ball rolling and see what my other options are. So I did some more research on, um, just self-publishing. And then the school that I had attended, I knew they had a sister company that did publishing. And I kind of didn't really put too much mind to it because I was initially thinking that traditional was the best way to go. So she started to host some um, information and in informational workshops on the three different publishing paths typically. And then I also took one with um, Gotham writers in New York City. And then I signed up for a one on one mentorship with an agent to kind of discuss the options. <clears throat> so both of them um, educated me in the from the standpoint that I didn't even I didn't know enough about the writing world to really even associate any kind of a stigma associated to someone who self publishes like, hey, you didn't you couldn't cut it. So you just sort of did it on your own kind of vibe. Um, so I didn't really know that that was kind of um, something that was out there, but I, 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 in addition to that, though, I think people seem to be embracing it a whole lot more. Um, you know, there, there was an example that one of the teachers that was presenting this information to me said that there was a woman who was, you know, in her early eighties and she was inspired some, by some things with her grandchildren. And, you know, she didn't want to sit around for 10 years and wonder if she was getting to get an agent. She had a wonderful story to share and tell and put in print. So she went with self-publishing. So once I started to learn about the details uh, behind the self-publishing, the biggest things that intimidated me was um, like establishing copyright, distribution, wholesales, um, you know, contacting larger companies for distribution, you know, the bigger houses that um, are debatable these days, but Amazon, Target, Walmart, Barnes and Nobles. And I thought, how, how the heck am I ever going to do that? I didn't have enough of a business background um, to feel confident. So in those workshops, I learned about hybrid houses. And I thought that was really appealing for all the reasons that I um, knew I was falling short in the publishing world and just distribution wise. 
And secondly, um, I was extremely passionate about being involved in, in the illustrations. I knew that there was not a lot of people that were exposed to animal rescue. You and I could probably sit here all day about the things in aviation that we have seen represented in a movie or a book, and we've rolled our eyes and you know, a lot of people could say that for any any field that they're in. So I felt extremely passionate about being involved in that. And then I learned through a hybrid house, I could be involved. Whereas if I was in a traditional house, I might be able to give them a little wish list and they'll say, we'll talk to you in six months when the illustrations are done. And for good reason, I understand their name is going on the book and they're confident they know what's going to sell. But I, I just felt like there, this was just so specific that I really wanted to be involved in that. So um, a hybrid house is where I settled and I ended up submitting to the hybrid house that is associated with the writing school that I, that I went to and they're called Biblio Kid. And um, I, I, I loved it. I loved being involved. It, again, the illustra- being involved with the illustrations was like the most magical part to me. And what has that timeline looked like for you? Okay, so I, um, I signed a publishing contract um, a, a year, almost a year ago. So in July of 2021. And then I started writing right at the be- beginning of the pandemic. So I guess we would be, you know, just over two, going into three years, as much as we all would like to like not acknowledge that's how long the world has been in this state, but it has. So it has been about th- going on three years for it to actually, and it launches June 14th. So um, I, I like that timeline. I've just started to think like, you know, not, no, it was like the aviation thing again, not knowing anyone and taking all almost a decade to try to know someone to even like possibly get a foot in the door. It just felt like the time was now and I needed to kind of, you know, just get on it and make it happen. So I had apprehensions though, for sure. You know, when I saw how much it cost, um, that made me cringe. I thought, okay, what are we doing here? My husband and I, are, are, our careers are in collapse right now, literally. Um, however, what ended up moving me forward in that direction was a little bit of math that was presented to me, you know, how much an agent gets, how much a publishing house gets versus how much um, a per book uh, self-published author gets. And then primarily through your website, um, if people order through your website, you know, that's a really good, finan- great financial support. So I tried to make that as attractive as possible. And um, all of my um, books are significantly marked up on my website, but they include a $2 donation to Air Rescue Services. And I really really can't tell you enough how much I enjoy putting in personal effects and touches into it. So I have included a lot of three different purchase packages to fit everyone's budget. And every single one of them includes that donation to the air rescue. So if you're feeling called to support the air rescue, the website purchases are the way to go. If you don't know me, you just sort of want to check out the book. You can get it for $16.99 on any of the larger platforms. Okay. So I may have missed it and you may have said it, but so what, what does the distribution look like for your book? Does the hybrid company handle distribution for you? Yes. Yes. So I don't even really have to think too much about it. So, um, yeah, so any, in any, any from smaller independent bookstore, they can all order the book on Ingram. Um, so I don't, I just felt like I really wanted someone to be able to, to handle, um, that aspect. It was just too foreign to me. You know, I know some other people kind of feel very confident and say, oh, that, that part of self-publishing was the easiest part for me. You know, they have a background in it, but it was just so new to me. Um, I just, like, it just felt foreign and uncomfortable. So they do handle all of that. And then, you know, they'll send me royalties as they come in um, from those. And then how are you handling, um, leading up to the launch, how are you handling book promotion? I mean, I see you on Instagram posting, but what else do you have going on? Uh, So I have um, a list of um, podcast interviews coming up, and then I'm also going to be featured on um, Pet Rescue Pilots um, out in California. They have, um, they have, they call it the PRP panel, and they have invites on and um, have discussion on there. Um, I would really like to cap it off with finally locking in a date with um, Wings of Rescue. Um, So what I'm hoping to do on my website right now, I have the Brandywine Valley SBCA in Westchester, Pennsylvania as the recipient of the $2 donation. 
um, but I would like to keep um, I, I would like to keep it flexible. They'll all, I mean, they, they are the OG inspirer. So they will always be my default um, recipients of the donation, but I would like to open it up to other rescues. So for, for a month, you know, it's negotiable, but I'm thinking maybe for a month, I might do wings of rescue so that the $2 go specifically to wings of rescue. So right now the $2 would go to the logistics and um, finances that are supporting the Brandywine Valley SPCA. Uh, which are sizable. Um, and then I, I'm, I'm already planning on um, my, Michael from Pilots to the Rescue here on the East Coast. Um, I'll be featuring him, but anyone that would like to just have like a temporary monthly feature and be the recipient, because then I could reach another audience. Um, so I guess that's how I'm trying to work the promotions from there. And then for some reason, there, there's a little bit of me that, you know, I'm just sort of a one woman show here and I'm still flying internationally. I do have this little bit of apprehension of, okay, Aaron, what if you do just get like a sizable amount of orders and you're in Italy and you cancel and, you know, and then I just have this thing ticking in my mind that I have all these um, orders to take care of. And I, like I said, I enjoy really putting some extra TLC into it. Like I want people to feel that when they unbox or on um, open their envelope. Um, so at the, at the moment, it's manageable. They're coming in at a slow, steady trickle, which is working out just fine for me. But I, you know, I guess I'll deal with that when I get there. Maybe I'll have to solicit a local teenager or something. <laughs> so if people, so what you're telling me is that in terms of distribution, the hybrid company will sell to bookstores and those kinds of things. But if you receive an order on your website, you're fulfilling it yourself? A hundred percent. I have turned my basement into a shipping center. And like my husband is hilarious. He like stands over where the boxes and the bubblers, mail bubblers are. And he's like, I'm in shipping. And then he walks five feet over where I have a little desk and a computer. I just bought a shipping label printer and I have that cooked up to my squares, my squares. Um, space website. And then that also talks to a company called Pirate Ship and Pirate Ship um, imports all the Squarespace um, orders. And then from there, I can weigh it, size it and print it. So wow. yeah, when I, I know I, even last night, I was down in my basement for, I think almost three hours getting pre-orders ready. Wow. That's so incredible. it is a little bananas and I don't know where, where, where it would go. So if anyone was to really wanting to order um, a bulk order, that would be something that I can direct them to through my publisher, and then they can buy them at wholesale. So if there's ever a large chunk that I could not handle, Aaron could not handle, then the publishing house, again, would have my back. So that was, I just wanted someone to have my my back on that. So um, I, because I, I knew this in-home order thing was happening, and I didn't know how it was all going to shake out. But that was a challenge, Liz. Like the, the day that I finally got I first purchased the wrong shipping label printer. And then I had my wonderful husband got me a new laptop for Christmas and I forgot it doesn't have a USB port. And then the shipping label printer does. So back to Staples, get the right labels, trying to get the Squarespace to talk to the pirate ship, to talk to the shipping print label printer. And then when I printed the first one, I didn't scale the size down to four by six. I left it at eight by 10, which is probably most of our defaults. So the, the label was all wrong. So by the time I finally got it done, it was like 1130 at night one night. I just felt like I just got a typewriting. I was like, yes, oh my goodness. It's an actual label. <laughs> oh, I totally can relate to that through like all of the technological things that I had to learn to be able to do this. Um, yeah, I get, I get it. Cause it did it's feel crazy. like I was in a crash course for flying in, in its own way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I just, I, it's a big learning curve and I, I love learning new things, but there was definitely a few times that I was frustrated and I needed to walk away and just say, all right, you will figure this out. Yep. You just don't know what it you is. You fly a multi-million dollar aircraft. <laughs> you can do this. <laughs> yes. That's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. Whatever we need to get to figure it out. But yeah, it, it was challenging. I mean, for me, because I just didn't have that, that background before. But um, yes, all those so things. <laughs> what, what lessons did you learn along the way that you would share with anybody else who's, who is thinking about self publishing, hybrid pub publishing, 
and maybe specifically about publishing for children? Um, the, my best advice is, I mean, for me, I liked the flexibility of the online courses because of course, a lot of them were recorded. Um, there was still a timeline to relatively adhere to, but I liked the flexibility with that. And if I was, if we were in another decade where all of this wasn't happening and someone said, oh, every Monday and Wednesday night we're, re we're meeting, there's a, a course um, there's no way I could sign up for that, not with the kind of aviation schedule I had. Um, so I would look into the online courses for sure because they're flexible. Um, and then as far as the publishing, um, I would just get the advice of a couple of different folks that are in all three avenues of publishing and then just see what fits for you. I mean, well, one of the things that my... Um, Two of the both the writing courses that I took at Gotham and at, um, Bibli at um, Journey to Kidlet, they had you fill out like, what is your writing goal? And that was kind of where mine was blossoming, right? So at first, like, do you want a book for your family and friends and maybe your local bookstore? Okay, then here's a path for you. If you want to, you know, write more than one, two, three books, you might want to start considering some kind of publishing house. They'll help you get they'll help you with the marketing and getting the word out and the distribution. And that might fall into the hybrid. I loved the hybrid to be involved in the illustrations, but I do know some of the other authors that, are, that I have a community with now in the same publishing house as myself, which is hybrid. And um, they were really comfortable almost primarily letting the illustrator take the reins on it. Um, for me, that was where some of the questions were with the book goals. I couldn't budge on the, the illustration. So that's ultimately what led me back to the, um, the hybrid publishing. And then I 100% have not written off um, traditional. I guess I shied away from it a, um, a little bit too, because I thought that this book might just be a one and done. But now that I have so many other ideas um, in the world of Aaron at the moment, I guess I would love to land at a uh, traditional publishing house. And then, I, I don't know, I think I could see myself maybe doing three books. That's kind of feels like where Aaron is at the moment. So I guess my advice would be just figure out what your book goals are, like what audience are you trying to reach and how big is it? And then you can decide on self hybrid or uh, a pub uh, traditional publishing house or an agent. Um, I just think it's kind of like, where, where do you want it to go? How big do you want it to go? And none are lesser than the other. It's just what's your lifestyle like too? Like that was kind of mine. That was a little bit about mine and mine is kind of on the brink of that, right? Cause I'm already worried about doing the, I want everyone to order through my website. And then at the same time, it's like, oh boy, then my workload's really going to excel and I'm, you know, in another country. So if that's uncomfortable and not appealing to you, depending on what your home life is like, um, then I would say keep on going for a, a publishing house or the, be patient for the traditional path. And and a slow and long path it is. <laughs> it is. It is such a it's such a wild ride. I mean, never again in my life will I ever pick up any book and devalue it with like a cutesy saying, like I'll never pick up a children's book and be like, oh, well, this is cute. No, I'll be like emailing the author saying congratulations. Yep. It is such a wild ride. I have learned so much. Um, I, I didn't even know about all the, I kind of like when I talk about this to other airline pilots about writing and they're maybe not in the, in the writing realm at all. I said, you know, the children's books, you can write whatever you whatever you want. However, in the courses that I've learned, there's kind of SOPs, right? You know, there's like rule of three, there's a catalyst, there might be a small win, there might be a setback. Um, you know, imagery can um, encapsulate that rule of three, the language, the plot. And so uh, I had no idea any of that took place, but I, I loved learning that part. I thought that was like really cool. That, that was a challenge then. It's like, okay, I've got this story, but how do I make it fit in these parameters where it can be a book of merit? Are you comfortable talking about any of the ideas that you have for other books yet? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, so I have, I have, Three that I really am passionate about, about. The first one I had shared with you is Bold Bella. And um, I just- I love this one. <laughs> okay. Yes, it fits for you and your crowd. This is it. 
Um, I just became in my book research um, with Halfway Home when I was trying to find something to elevate the storyline. I was thinking about working. Can this dog turn into a working dog? That was something attractive to me. Um, and I knew that there was often a lot of dogs at airports that are kind of staples or mascots. So I kind of toyed with that before, just for a nanosecond, but it was, I knew I really wanted the aviation part in, but it was just part of the re something that came up in the research. So in that, I just fell in love with the canine coasties. I mean, come on, they, they're in their goggles, they're in the hoist, they're doing real survival missions. I just thought it was amazing. Like, I mean, I was probably up to three in the morning watching YouTube videos one night. It's like ridiculous. So my bold Bella is about a dog who has some behavioral issues that is encouraged to channel it into um, um, in her training. And then unbeknownst to the reader, the um, woman is who owns the dog is also in the Coast Guard. And she's really hoping that this dog can participate in the canine coastie program with her. Um, but it is a little bit of a question mark because it's not going well. So um, I didn't know much about the canine coastie. So that draft is just a draft. Um, but I would love to, like, I just, you know, again, my mind immediately goes to the illustrations. I just think the illustrations and that can just be so so cool. But of course, I want to have them accurately um, done. So that's why I thought it was great that you weighed in on it. And then my second one, I really like to because the marketing director at the SPCA has done a lot of interviews. And she um, said something that really landed with me because I can understand this as a pilot too. like, you know, people tend to have a reaction that are outside the aviation world. When you say that you're a pilot, you know, there's something they get excited. And um, there, the woman in the marketing department said in an interview once that um, sh that the big visual for an air rescue is the airplane and unloading. But the second the animals come to the shelter, you know, that's when the real work begins. So I wrote a manuscript um, from an airplane's perspective. So the airplane um, kind of the airplane's ego gets a little out of control. And is a little over and really thinks that they're the only important role in air rescue. And so the story kind of goes on and ends up getting a little, um, it ends up eating a little bit of humble pie, but in the best possible way. <laughs> and then some of my, and then my third one is a mother daughter um, story. The, the mother is a pilot and then they have a mission to um, deliver three animals and they're trying to get back in time for an air show because the mother is also an aerobatic performer. Right. So there's, I love that. That's a theme in my timeline. book. That's a theme <laughs> in my book. I love that. There's a timeline to... on that one. That is the, you know, the stakes are raised for that. Can they get back in time for this air show? Um, and then the mother daughter um, influence on that. Um, came really from Pilots and Paws. There's a lot of uh, YouTube videos and there's um, primarily um, a lot of men taking their young sons on these Pilots and Paws missions. And I just thought, oh, okay, cool. But uh, one of the best things that Gotham writers told me is to stay in my lane and write what I know about. So it's not that I really want to disclude the, the men and their sons that are flying, but that's not as relatable to me, like being a woman and a pilot and having a younger female with me that I'm influencing um, what resonated with me more. So that's how those characters came to be. Well, I love all of those story ideas. They're amazing. And I just like this, this Coast Guard rescue thing, of course, is near and dear to my heart. I almost, this... I almost died when you, I know I, when I realized your, your background, I was like, oh my goodness, I've got to send this to her and see what she yeah. I need like full spreads of the 65 bright orange, beautiful helicopter yes. with the doggy, with the goggles, like you talked about on the hoist. Cause it's, I mean, we have, you and I both follow these guys on Facebook who post about our dogs. And if you like, I don't know if you're connected to any of them to like actually do an interview. If you need any help with that, I'm here for you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. I think we should go down that road for sure. I, I, that is another one that I, I wrote your, um, well, be right around the same time that I wrote halfway home. And I just kind of shelved it for a while because this started taking up so much energy, but you know, I'm starting to, you know, the momentum of the launch is happening. I have a couple of news interviews coming up the week of the launch, but as that kind of slows down in the summer, like, again, I'm getting itchy to get these other ones going. <laughs> That's awesome. I wanted to mention just a series of books. Um, 
that I really love. It's not aviation related, but it is Coast Guard dog related. Cool. Um, one of our, and I was looking it up while we were talking, The Adventures of Onyx and the Guardians of the Straits is one of them. And there are a series of them. Onyx was a dog who was a, a Coast Guard. Um, I, I can't remember if he was on a cutter or on, uh, or she, it might be a she, or uh, at a small boat station. In a lot of our stations and smaller boat ships have a dog who's like the, the station mascot. Cool. And Onyx, Onyx has passed on um, at this point, but there's a series of books. I think it was a girl about her and her adventures with the Coast Guard. So anyway, oh, it's love lovely. It. I love it. So this has been awesome. Um, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? last thought I had is that I am being covered by um, two, two local news stations, NBC 10 Philadelphia and ABC six, and they will be um, June 10th and June uh, 15th. So of course I'll have links for those for pe- folks that are out of town. So um, depending on when this airs, they might be available to add at the bottom of the podcast. If people are interested in actually seeing, cause I'll, for one of them, I'll be, I'll actually be at the shelter and with some other the air rescue people, um, so people can kind of get a feel for for that. Um, and then if you were to Google um, Aaron Murphy um, pilots to the rescue, you can see the fabulous video that Michael and his team um, put together from when I did my air rescue day. It's nice to get eyes on it because sometimes I I can share this information or people can listen to it. But like I said, until I was standing there and that Brasilia rolled up and that cargo door opened, and I had that thought of. You got to be kidding me with this. I mean, that is, it is stuck with me and has been such a driving force through all my writing and my drive to share this. I just, until you're there, it's just, it's bananas. I just can't get over like what I was seeing. It's incredible. Well, we will look for all of those on social media and elsewhere. Thank you so much, Erin. This has been awesome. Oh, great. Thanks Liz. for sharing I your know. writing and publishing story. Um, my drive to Newark is 100% filled with your podcast. I'm learning about different um, aviators and aviatrix and people that are writing that I didn't know about. So all of that is just through my connection with you. So I thank you as well. Oh, I love to hear that. We are building just a gorgeous community here with, I have big vision for this community. So I'm oh. glad that you're here. Thank you for being here. To say for later, you cannot trust it to come again, to wait for you to find a pen and fill the paper with the message that it wants.